Murray Black was elected in 2015 as the MP for Paisley and Renfrewshire South. In winning that seat, she became the youngest member of parliament at just 20 years old. But more than that, she became the youngest MP since the Act of Parliament 300 years ago. Black's youth meant she came to be viewed as synonymous with the SNP's extraordinary results that night, as they won 56 out of 59 seats in Scotland. The conclusion was clear, that independence and those driving it were the future. But speaking today with Emily Maitlis on the News Agents podcast, Miss Black announced the next step in her political career. You're not going to stand not for the SNP? Stand. No. I'm stepping down at the next election. Why? Honestly, because I don't... I'm tired is a big part of it. And the thing that makes me tired is Westminster, I think, it is one of the most unhealthy workplaces that you could ever be in. It's a toxic environment. It is... It, it, just the entire design of the place and how it functions is just the opposite of everything that I find comfortable. Toxic is a strong word. It means poisonous. Mm. Yep, absolutely. It's definitely a poisonous place, <laughs> whether that's because of, uh, you know, what folk can get away with in it or what the, the number of um, sort of personal motivations and, you know, folk having ulterior motives for things. And it's just... It's, it's just not a nice place to be in. What does that mean? You don't you don't trust people. You don't trust your colleagues there. No, I mean, of course, there's. I work with very closely with colleagues, but I suppose I'm talking more about how it's difficult to know if somebody's certainly from other parties is talking to you because there's a genuine relationship there, or whether they're looking for opportunities. You know, so you can never really switch off when you're in Westminster, and also get. Given the, I suppose, unsociable hours that Westminster works as well, it feels like you're spending a lot of your life there. And in the run-up to the next election, I've realised that'll be almost 10 years that I'll have been elected. So a third of my life I've spent in Westminster, which gives me the ick. Yeah, you are you are too young to be tired I know. this early. <laughs> I, know. I mean, to, to remind mm. our listeners, you were 20 yep. when you won your seat. You were the... Youngest person to be elected, I think, since the Act of Parliament. Mm -hmm. 300 years. Yeah, as far as I'm aware. So much to talk about from that clip. And that's before noting Emily Maitlis's varsity style Princess Diana jacket. But more importantly, the description of Parliament as toxic is an extraordinary claim for someone who is an MP and says they're leaving because of that toxicity. I think Parliament is toxic. Most of my colleagues here at Navarra Media do too. But for a departing MP to say as much, I think is genuinely new and says a lot. Michael, the fact that Mario Black says her youth gives her a particular perspective on Westminster dysfunction is really interesting, isn't it? Yeah, it is interesting. I mean, I, I suppose it also depends on whether you're a career politician, right? Because a lot of people who sort of, you know, they go through as an advisor, I'm thinking of Wes Streeting, basically, you know, you go, you go, you, you climb up the ladder of NUS politics and you're an advisor, then you work in all of these political organizations. Your life is sort of being part of these factional wars and you sort of come to understand that this is what politics is about so if you arrive there without having gone through you know that whole system and also having been inclined to it frankly because you know most people who become a u.s president i mean it will change but sort of through labor students and that sort of particular route you're going to be somewhat inclined towards sort of factional maneuvering and if you have as myri black did kind of landed in parliament almost accidentally you know so it was, it was relevant that she was, she was sort of first elected in that SNP landslide because there were lots of MPs that they didn't necessarily expect to, to win or lots of candidates, I should say, that they didn't expect to win. So her getting there without that background and seeing how toxic the whole thing is, I think is incredibly relevant. I mean, it would be interesting to see how this sort of compares in, in, in different countries and different places. I mean, it might be the case that where you've got proportional representation and people are more likely to, to work with each other as opposed to constantly against each other. Um, that could create more of a sort of functional working environment where people are talking about actually solving the problems that we face in this country instead of getting one over on each other. Um, I, I, I'm not confident to say it wouldn't be toxic in, in, in many places. And I can also imagine that being an MP at 20, um, in many countries, you would probably want to quit by 30, right? Because that is a, a significant period of your life in the public eye doing a very demanding, high stress job. But no, I mean, absolutely. I'm sure there are many improvements that could be made to make Parliament less toxic. And that wouldn't just have an effect on the people 
in there. I mean, obviously, I have some compassion towards Myri Black, but my political priorities aren't how can we make the lives of MPs nicer. But I think if we could make Westminster more focused on solving the country's problems as opposed to having stupid rows with each other, that would probably be helpful. Besides that interview with the News Agents podcast, Black also published a statement on social media where she said this, watching people in my constituency being continually harmed by a UK government they never voted for, despite my best efforts to fight against its cruel policies, is beyond demoralizing. While representing this brilliant constituency is a true honor, this aspect is painful and would take its toll on anyone who cares as it has me. Since 2015, the lives of my loved ones have been turned upside down and inside out between media attention, social media abuse, threats, constant travel, and the murder of two MPs. My loved ones have been in a constant state of anxiety for my health and safety. They have always encouraged me to follow my gut and to do what makes me happy. It is for these reasons that I decided some time ago that the 2019 election will be my last term. As my parents grow older and I embark on married life, I have reassessed my personal priorities. I sincerely hope folk will understand my wish to spend more time with my loved ones in a safer environment as I pass the baton to the next candidate. So concerns around her personal safety and well-being accompany wider misgivings Black has regarding Westminster and the political process. No mention is made of what she plans to do next. And the inference in that final passage is she may withdraw from politics to some extent ahead of the next election. Very sad to see. Mari Black was uh, one of a number of politicians who entered politics after 2015. And I remember the leadership debates in 2017 with uh, Caroline Lucas and Leanne Wood. There was Mari Black too, Jeremy Corbyn. And it felt like something was shaking up British politics that seems to have subsided.